This is Nel Sambatakos from ProSport, and this is a case example of an arthroscopic suprascapular nerve release. Now, the suprascapular nerve originates from C5, C6, uh, with occasionally some contributions from C4. And as it courses towards the scapula, it dives into this suprascapular notch underneath the superior transverse scapular ligament. It then also courses around the backside of the scapula, the spinoglenoid notch, and it can be compressed in either location there. So here, we're looking at the superior transverse scapular ligament in green, and that's the site of compression in our patient here today. Compression of this nerve has been found in up to a third of overhead athletes. Uh, the primary presenting symptom is that of external rotation weakness, although you can have weakness with abduction depending on the site of compression. There's also a sensory component to this, so occasionally athletes will experience postero superior shoulder pain. But the primary concern is permanent weakness with external rotation and abduction if this goes unchecked, uh, which should prompt nerve conduction studies and MRI imaging to evaluate further. So to begin the procedure, we're gonna start in the subacromial space right here above the rotator cuff. And here we can see we're just cleaning out a number of adhesions and some bursal tissue here, just so we can have a view and uh, proceed with our dissection. We begin following the corcochromial ligament or CA ligament, which I'm gonna highlight here in green right there. Uh, and that's a structure that's gonna take us right on down to the coracoid. Uh, that's the front bony structure of the scapula there, and that's gonna be an important landmark here. And so here I've just identified the coracoid, and I'm gonna stay on that bone, and I'm gonna carefully follow it and use blunt dissection to mobilize some of the soft tissues uh, out of the area here. And, and that's gonna show us uh, what we need to see right here, which is that superior transverse scapular ligament. So again, just to show you through the animation here, that's where we're going and it's that green structure right there that uh, that's compressing the suprascapular nerve. Uh, the artery, the suprascapular artery runs above it, the nerve runs below it. Uh, and here we are, we're just bluntly dissecting uh, to create an area for me to bite through and release that uh, uh, scapular ligament there. So I'm using this basket forceps or biter uh, to just bluntly open up uh, an interval there and I'm taking very small uh, bites to carefully release that. Um, I'm also simultaneously retracting both the artery and the nerve out of the way. Uh, in other cases here you can see an image of a case I did where uh, the ligament had actually ossified and occasionally you have to use an osteotome or what is essentially a chisel to, to get through that bone, but that was unnecessary in this case. So here we can see a complete release. We can now see the uh, uh, artery above there um, moving nicely and uh, is not seeing any area of compression. And then below that we see the suprascapular nerve right there and I can just kind of move it around and show that there's nothing tethering it in any way. So that completes our case. Hope that's helpful. Thanks very much. This is Nell Sampatakos. Take care.